Now the question is how do we exploit the principle of spatial locality in our caches? And that is done mainly with the help of cache blocks. Let's recall the cache model that we are using so far. So far we are assuming that our caches have basically these three fields. There is a valid bit, there is a tag field and a data field. And essentially our cache is uh, our, our, an array of several rows or organized in, in some form of a table. Let's assume this is our RAM. And these are the memory addresses in binary. Uh, let's, let's say there is a variable X stored over here. So the way our cache works is uh, during execution, if the CPU creates a request for the variable X, we'll check whether X is present in the cache. Let's assume that the cache is empty. So we have to go get this X from the main memory. Uh, we'll grab it from here and we'll place the data corresponding to X here in the data field and the address, which is 0010, that would be stored in the tag field. And this valid bit would be set to one. So this is what we have seen so far. However, now, we know from principle of spatial locality that if this X was accessed, this neighboring location Y is also very likely to be accessed in the near future. So to take advantage of the spatial locality, what we will do is whenever there was a miss for this X, we will not only bring in X here in the cache, we will also bring in Y in the cache. Okay, so our cache is now going to expand. Instead of storing just one data item in every row, we'll store let's say two data items. So each row is now a cache block that can store multiple words in a single cache line or cache row. So the value of this variable Y would be stored adjacent to that of X here in the same row. So we have 456 here now. So note that within each row, there are now two data items. This is data zero, this is data one. So data zero field is storing 123, which is the value of X. This is X and this is Y in, in data one. So far, so good. So we can now store two data items within each cache row. Uh, however, there are some logistic changes that need to happen to make this work. So for instance, now we have this extra space here. So we can store these two separate variables, uh, who, X and Y with value 123 and 456 in the same row. However, note that there is still only one column or one room for the tag field, which is supposed to store the address of the data items. So now the question is, if there is only one entry, one tag entry that can be stored in each row, which tag should we store? Should we store the address of X or the address of Y? Now there is a problem if we store the address or the e either addresses. Let's try to understand this with a simple example, right? Let's assume that we are storing the address of X here, which is 0010. If the CPU next requests the value of X, we'll go through the cache, we'll, we'll see that the address of X is here, so we'll know this is a hit, and we can return this value 123 from here to the CPU. There is no problem. But later, let's say CPU generates the address of Y, right? Which is basically 0011. So we again go through the cache, uh, the tag array, and we'll see that basically we'll go through the entire cache, but 0011 is nowhere to be found. So we'll conclude that Y is a miss in the cache. However, we know that Y is stored here. So it should have, it should have hit. So how do we fix this problem? Essentially, in the tag field, we need to store only that portion of the memory address, which is common to both X and Y. To make this work, the memory addresses would now be divided into two parts. Let's say this is our entire memory address. It would be divided into a block offset and a tag field. The tag field is that portion, that common portion of the memory addresses that will be stored here in the tag column. And the block offset of the memory address would be used to distinguish between these various words, these data items that are stored within the same row of, uh, of the cache. So for instance, in our example, all the memory addresses are four bits. Now in each row, if we consider a row, there are two data items, data item zero, this is data item one. So to distinguish between two data items, we need log two base two of two, one bit. So if we have a four bit address, let's say we have this address zero, 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 one, our, the least significant one bit, this would be reserved for the block offset and all the remaining higher order bits, these would be the tag field. So let's go back to the example of these variables X and Y. 
uh, when there is a hit for variable x uh, the uh, the address of variable x is basically uh, 0 0 1 0 we'll break down this address into a tag and the block offset field right so uh, because the block has two words log to base 2 of 2 which is one bit this bit would be reserved for the block offset and all the remaining higher order bits this would be the tag field so when there is a request for this data item x we will uh, will find a empty row let's say this first row is empty we will set this valid bit to 1 and then in the tag field we will only store the tag portion of the memory address for x right which is 0 0 1 so 0 0 1 will be stored the entire address will not be stored the value of x which is 123 which will go here in data 0 and the value of y which is 456 would be stored here in in data uh, 1 field now let's assume later cpu requests the data item y right so the address of y is basically 0 0 1 1 so once again this address would be divided into the block offset field and the tag field so we will search the cache using just the tag portion of this uh, of this address which is 0 0 1 right so note that 0 0 1 would be found here so there would be hit in this line and y is in fact here right now the question is once there is a hit in this row there are two data items here how do we know whether we are looking for 123 or 456 so this is where will this block offset will come into play right so the block offset is one note that this is the first data item here this is block offset zero the second one is block offset one right so this is essentially data zero is block offset zero data one is block offset one so because the block offset of this memory address is one we are looking for 456 and not 123 so this is how uh, cache blocks can be used to store multiple data items in a single uh, cache row and help us exploit spatial locality